Hi there folks, now in this week's video we're going to continue on our theme of examining some of the technical indicators that many traders use in their trading. Today we're going to look at the RSI indicator. It's a commonly used technical indicator, many of the banks and analysts use this so we're going to explore it in more detail. Now you can download a cheat sheet as well, I suggest you do that after watching the video then everything will become a lot clearer. You can then get it laminated, leave it on your desk or just stick it in your file of content that we're dishing out here on the channel. Okay, so let's talk about the RSI indicator, the Relative Strength Index. Now, as with any technical indicator out there, this should not be used as a standalone indicator. You need to use it in conjunction with other indicators, perhaps some price action, support and resistance and so forth. I always say that no indicator has got the magic. No indicator is the holy grail. But it's important that you know about the RSI so that you know whether you can incorporate it into your strategy building or not. It's certainly something you may want to consider. So let's go into this now. I do also know that the, many of the big banks, uh, or I read all the bank reports, a lot of them talk about the RSI indicator in terms of being overbought, oversold and all that. So I think it's important that you know, that's another reason why I want to put this video together. Right, okay, so let's have a look. Uh, the RSI indicator was created by a guy called James Wilder uh, back in the 70s. I'm not sure you really need to know that, but there you go. I'll put it on the slide anyway, uh, just in case you're interested. Okay, it is a momentum oscillator. Momentum basically meaning uh, gauging the speed of a move, and it obviously ranges between levels. More about that in a second. But momentum basically, it measures the speed of the asset's move. Okay, so it measures the magnitude of the asset's gains in relationship to its losses over a certain period of time. In the next slide, I'm going to show you the formula, which might explain that a little bit more. But it's basically uh, comparing the gains in a period over the losses in a predefined period. Okay, the rising RSI, so an RSI that's moving up, that will indicate a rise in momentum. And a falling RSI will indicate a fall in momentum. And when the momentum starts to maybe wane, starts to slow down, that could be indicating a turnaround in that particular trend or in that particular momentum. Okay, it fluctuates between zero and 100. All oscillators fluctuate. That's basically what they do. They oscillate and they go between zero and 100. They can't go below zero and they can't go above 100. But the way we use the indicator or the way that the analysts, uh, traders use the indicator is that they have bands. They have bands where markets are considered to be oversold and overbought. So they oscillate or the, uh, the indicator uh, key levels that we look at are 70 and 30. Anything over 70 is overbought in theory. Anything below 30 is oversold in theory. Okay, the default period that you get when you download this onto your platform uh, from your indicator section normally is 14. Um, I know some um, like to use a, uh, a, a bigger number, bigger default period, um, and that basically would uh, smooth out the oscillator. But 14 is the default, um, and it is a leading indicator. A lot of the indicators out there, uh, they are lagging indicators. What do we mean by lagging? Well, basically, we mean that it lags behind the price. It basically shows you what's happened in the past. Whereas uh, the RSI and most oscillators, they're considered to be leading indicators, basically helping you predict where the prices may go in the future. It doesn't necessarily mean one is better than the other, but it is a uh, leading indicator. So this is the formula um, of the RSI. You don't need to know this formula. It really isn't that important. Um, but if uh, you are mathematically inclined and you want to delve deeper into it, this is the basic uh, formula. RSI equals 100 minus 100 divided by 1, uh, which is minus RS. And the RS is the average of the price increases over a period divided by the average of the price decreases over a period. So what that basically means is, if you have a 14 period, um, say the, the, the default, and say over eight days, so that's 14 days, so eight of those days you had a rising market. It averages out the number of pips, basically, um, that it rose in those eight days. And it divides that by the other six days where it declined in value. So you average out the declines, the gravity of the declines, it might have gone down six pips, seven pips on a day, averages out those six days worth of declines, and that's basically the RS. So you can see it's measuring the, basically the speed of the move. That is maybe the first and possibly the last time you'll ever need to look at that formula. So basically it looks like this on a chart, when you drag it onto your chart, 
Uh, as with most indicators, they appear at the bottom of uh, the screen. And you can see it here, you've got the price action at the top and you've got the oscillator at the bottom. Um, you've got the uh, center line here, the 50, and we've got in here the 70 and the 30. That's overbought and oversold. You see it is, uh, it is uh, reasonably effective um, in predicting those uh, turning points. We'll talk about the ways that you can use the RSI indicator. I think there are basically three ways that I've seen uh, many traders use the RSI indicator and we want to go through those now in uh, some uh, quite quick detail. So you can use these with the trend. Uh, as with all oscillators really, you can use with the trend. Uh, use them to time your entry. So you have the higher time frame trend and you time uh, the entry on the lower time frame, possibly by using an RSI. I'll show you in a chart in a moment exactly what I mean as the markets move uh, up and below the 30. Uh, moving into the 70 doesn't necessarily mean you should be selling it, but when it moves back into the main body, maybe that's a time where you could start getting back into um, uh, the trend to the downside. You can also use them in range trading markets. As I alluded to at the beginning, uh, you should never be using these on their own, maybe with some support and resistance. If you see the RSI turn at support and resistance and it's a rangy market, it could be a quite a good way to help predict uh, those turning points within uh, the predetermined range that you see the market is in. And you can also use it in counter trend. Um, I think this is, um, by the looks of things, the sort of like the main common way that a lot of uh, technical analysts use the RSI indicator, and that's by using uh, the RSI uh, divergence and I'll explain that again in a moment. Okay so with trend to time the entries on a pullback so here you see we have an uptrend so here we've got the four hour time frame we're confirming the trend is up higher time frame trend confirmation uptrend you can put some moving averages on there if you want to confirm your trend but we know trends don't last forever we know that trends always have pullbacks along the way um, and we want to get into the trend on that pullback using the RSI could be a way that you may want to uh, look at that so for example here you'll see this is the 15 minute time frame the lower time frame chart okay this is a pullback that pullback is basically that little pullback which basically is represented by that on the chart you'll see here the RSI is coming back down trades below the 30 and then pulls back up again that could be a timing that you would use to enter to get back in on this trend. So the pullback is complete and you're trading now with the trend on that pullback. Maybe uh, do some analysis, do some back testing on that theory as well for trading um, the other side with the trend. So here yeah, you literally have the buy there and, and so forth. Right, next way we look at it is uh, trading at the range. Okay, you can see here the markets are ranging. This is obviously historical data. Don't say you just pulled up the screen. Well, I pulled up the screen just because it shows it's working. You need to do some back testing and look at the charts yourself to see if indeed you are seeing something there that is worth applying to your strategy. But you can see here the market is trending. Um, and you see here we had a sell at the top here where we had the, the move out through the, uh, through the 70 and then back through again. Indeed, that one would have worked. Then we move back down through the 30 and then back up into the main body. That would have been a buy. We've got another sell here. Back up through the... Uh, 70 and then comes back into the main body so it's basically going back down from the 70 into uh, into the rate into the range that could indicate a sell there may got stopped out on that one there got a buy here at the bottom again down to the bottom so you can see this ranging market has been quite well um, depicted by using the RSI oscillator um, as well you see another one at the top here broke out through the 70 and then comes back down indicating a possible sell so that's one way you can use it with the range um, and lastly let's look at it with uh, divergence what is divergence divergence basically means when things are diverging they're moving away from each other um, and that is a great a quite a common um, form of analysis that technical traders use when they're looking at markets you see here the price is moving up we've created a series of higher highs in there higher highs um, and higher lows um, with this yellow line here but look at the RSI indicator. The RSI indicator is actually creating a lower high. So the RSI indicator is going down and the um, price action is going up. That shows you that these lines are diverging away from each other. They are often used to predict turning points, counter trend moves. When you see the RSI indicator diverge away from price. There's another one over here as well. You see price is making higher highs, yeah, and that's depicted there by the, the trend line I've drawn in there and the RSI indicator is pointing down. 
So the RSI indicator is showing you that the momentum is waning. The momentum is pulling back. Could indicate that we're seeing a reversal, a trend reversal. Again, I think you should be using, using these uh, in conjunction with other price action, such as uh, support and resistance. So divergence is basically that. There's divergence is a whole different topic indeed on that. You can explore that and we may even put out a video on divergence um, another time. What I'll do now is jump onto the screens and show you this on some real life price charts so things might become a little bit clearer. Okay, so this is a regular MT4 price chart. You would add your RSI indicator in the same way that you'd add any indicator. You go to insert indicators, it's an oscillator, find the oscillators, and there it is, the relative strength index. Default to the 14, colors and so forth, applies to the, clo uh, the close. Here you can put in your levels, 30 and 70, overbought and oversold uh, zones uh, you put in there. Click OK, and there it appears at the bottom of the price chart in the usual way. You can move it up or down uh, however uh, you wish. Okay, so for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to use some backtesting software. That way I'll be able to scroll through the charts with a click of the space bar and you'll see how price action affects the RSI indicator. Now, what we're going to start off by looking at is entering into a trend on the lower time frame, pull back through the RSI. So you can see here on the right of the screen, the trend is clearly up. We are in an uptrend. We're only looking for buy trades. That's the four hour chart. So now let's drill down to the lower time frame chart. This is the 15 minute chart. And this is my RSI indicator here at the bottom. So clicking on through, I'm waiting now for this RSI indicator to trade below the 30 and then back up. Okay, there we trade below the 30. Um, and now waiting for a move up and indeed moves up pretty much uh, the next candle. That's indicating that this move back, this pullback here may now be oversold and that the trend will continue with the trend um, and indeed uh, that's exactly what happens there to price. You can see we're using the RSI indicator to perfect the timing of our entry on a pullback in an uptrend or any particular trend. Yeah, downtrend of course would be the opposite. Okay so now I want to show you an example of how you could possibly use the RSI indicator uh, in ranging markets basically looking to buy the bottoms and sell the tops in ranges. Um, if that is your thing. The moment we are overbought, we're waiting for it to pull back through into uh, the uh, below the 70. And indeed, there it does. That gives us a, maybe a sell uh, signal in that range. Okay, the market does indeed move back down. And then we've now gone into the oversold and going uh, up through now the 30. Gives us a potential buy uh, there. Okay, we've gone back down through again. Um, and indeed, up it goes through again you can see there's pips to be had in there uh gotta be quite careful trading this way you're gonna get whipped sort of out to a certain extent i certainly suggest you go and back test it but it's interesting to see how the rsi indicator uh, works uh, in these ranging markets now just dip below the oversold and you buy it again as it trades back up through some pips to be had in there but again you've got to definitely back test uh, that method Okay, so here's a classic case of some bearish divergence. Here you'll see we've just broken out of resistance. Now uh, price is making higher, uh, higher highs and higher lows. We can stick in a trend line to depict that, and it goes to there. But if you drill down now to the RSI indicator, uh, despite these higher highs, the RSI indicator actually had a lower high, and you can plot that in with a trend line as well. So you can see the uh, divergence between the price and the RSI indicating that this trend may be wanting to reverse on itself. And we can scroll on through and see uh, that is exactly uh, what happened. And the early indication there was the bearish divergence. So go and check that out as well and see if you can find some other examples. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Hopefully now you understand the workings of the RSI indicator. Now with all indicators, as you know, you shouldn't be using it as a standalone. You should be using conjunction with other indicators technical analysis and so forth. Now there is a downloadable cheat sheet as I mentioned at the beginning. You can download that now by uh, filling in the details in the description tab below. You can print it off, get it laminated, keep it in your desk so you've got this ever-growing library of content of the videos that we're putting out here on the channel. Talking of which, you tell me now what you want to hear. We're putting these videos out at quite a pace. And we'd love to hear what you want me to cover. So leave a comment below, let me know what you want covered and we'll see if we can get it done. 
As always, I hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down if you didn't. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and that bell notification, as always, will alert you when the next video has been released. And of course, if you want to join us each and every day on our daily live streams, you can do so here at forexsignals.com. We are streaming live five times a day, five days a week. You can take out a free trial and see what it's all about. If it's not your thing, not a problem. You don't have to stay, but I'm sure you will love it. If that's not your thing, not a problem. I will see you next week and have a good week.